Welcome to the VA Quality Scholars Methods and Analysis mini module on Rare Events SPC, G Charts and T Charts. I'm Dr. Brant Oliver, Lead Improvement Measurement and Analysis Core Faculty for the VA Quality Scholars Program and Associate Professor at Dartmouth. This Improvement Methods and Analysis mini module was developed in collaboration with VAX Methods and Analysis faculty colleagues, Dr. Susie Miltner and Molly Horseman. In this mini module, we will depart from standard SPC analysis approaches, which are designed for the statistical assessment of frequent events, and focus on a category of SPC analyses, which are reserved for use in situations where the event rate is infrequent or rare. Standard SPC analyses for frequent events are shown in the green circle and include commonly used approaches such as the XMR and P-chart. The approaches we'll focus on today include the T-chart for time between rare events analyses and the G-chart for opportunities between rare events analyses, shown in the red box. Rare events SPC analyses are indicated in situations where the number of observations is greater than one and the event rate is low or infrequent. Standard SPC analyses, such as the XMR and P-chart, require frequent observations. Two commonly used SPC approaches for rare events analysis include the G-chart and the T-chart. The G-chart measures counts of occurrences between incidences. The T-chart measures time between events. An example appropriate for a G-chart analysis is how many procedures are there between adverse events. A situation appropriate for a T-chart is how many patient days between patient falls. There are two basic indications for using rare events analyses in SPC. The first is when you detect that the event rate is too low or infrequent to use standard SPC analyses, such as the XMR or P-chart, both of which require frequent observations. You may observe that there are too many zero values in your data display, which suggests a very low event rate. Or you may also observe a visual sawtooth pattern in the data display. Both of these observations suggest that your event rate may be too low for a standard SPC analysis and that you should consider using a rare events SPC analysis. The second indication is when you are most interested in spans of events or time that occur between events rather than the event frequencies or proportions themselves. Here is an example of a C-chart in which the frequency of observations is too low or infrequent to use in a standard SPC analysis. Notice the sawtooth visual pattern present here. In this case, consider using a rare events SPC analysis. Here is an example of a G-chart. Notice that it appears similar to other SPC charts in many respects, including a center line shown in light blue and a controlled limit line shown in dotted red. On the x-axis is shown the date of the incidence of concern. On the y-axis is the number of events between incidences. Each G point, circled in red, is a count of the number of events between incidences. And notice that the blue line value of 26.786 is the average number of events between incidents. One aspect of G-charts that differs from standard SPC analyses is that G-charts only have an upper control limit. This is because there can't be negative numbers of events or units between incidences. You'll also notice that the upper control limit distance from the center line is greater than that in many standard SPC analyses. It can approach approximately four times that of the average of all G-values or as much as 5.7 times the value of the center line. This is to protect against outlier effects that can occur in infrequent event rate samples, or in other words, to protect against inflated type 1 error risk in small samples, which can result in tampering. Otherwise, G-charts behave very similarly to other SPC analyses you have previously learned. The typical special cause signals that you use for analyses of standard SPC can also be used here, including shifts, trends, points outside of the control limits, and others. Here, a downward shift is identified, indicating a decrease in the number of events observed between incidences. 
it is important to note that there is variation and debate regarding the calculations of G charts. In the upper chart is the IHI approach shown in the Provost textbook. In the lower chart is the default QI macros approach, which is derived from Lean Six Sigma. In the Provost approach, G charts are assumed to follow a geometric distribution. For this reason, Provost argues that the center line should be adjusted to reflect the theoretical median of a geometric distribution. This affects the control limit calculation substantially. Others, such as Benian and Lean Six Sigma approaches, argue that the actual arithmetic mean should be used for the central line. QI macros defaults to this approach, but can be adjusted to other approaches as needed. It's important to note that the QI macros version of the G-chart behaves very similarly to the T-chart. Next is the T-chart, which uses a transformed exponential analysis to assess time to event or time between events. The T-chart has a standard SPC visual appearance, including a light blue center line and control limits in dotted red lines. The x-axis shows the date of each event and the y-axis shows the time interval between events. Note that the t-chart calculates each t-value as the time interval between successive observations. Here note that there is no data point for the first index event. The first t-value data point is the time elapsed between the first and second events. The t-chart assumes a transformed exponential distribution and has upper and lower control limits that are calculated in an XMR chart-like way based on an average moving range calculation of the absolute value differences in sequential t-values, which is plus or minus three sigma deviations from the center line. The center line itself, shown in light blue, is the average of all time-to-event values. In this case, it is 70.68 days between events. Similar to the G-chart, the T-chart also allows for all of the basic special cause signals used in standard SPC analyses, including shifts, trends, and points outside of the control limits. Although in the case of the T-chart, the strongest signal is one or more points outside of the control limits. A shift is identified here, indicating an increase in the amount of time between events. 